I did run back. So we're not at the save where I was last time. But this is so freaking dark. Blinding powder. Did I unequip turntail? Well, it don't matter. Since we can unequip it in battle. What is this? It's so pretty. It's pretty, but a little bit scary. If it weren't for shining, glittering lights, I would totally be scared. Oh, we had a save over here. <laughs> well, could have just continued running and we would have had one. <laughs> Great. And I ran back for the save. We're gonna lose our, our fairy now. I know it's not a fairy, but I wanna call it a fairy. Can we go another way? Wait, I don't think we check this place out like we should. I didn't go under the bridge. I can do this! Oh, it's the UFO again. Might as well fight. It feels like you're not really supposed to flee from that many fights. Because otherwise, we'll probably be very underleveled for the boss. Miss this counter. Ho, ho, ho. Mm. But we missed the regular attack. Oh well. <laughs> such a devastating attack from such a small kid. <laughs> to have that much power in a small, small body. I wonder if it's pronounced "eyed" or like "idea." What do you guys think? It feels like we will have some kind of a boss battle in this cave, but I've no clue what it could be. I feel like maybe it's gonna be some kind of a monster? Maybe... or maybe one of those dark sorcerers looking thing, but more like a boss? A boss alien? Don't overdo it! Everyone will get a hit. Bye -bye. Oh, of course we missed. Uh, it's 50-50 with these flyers. Squashed. 
Now it's one more and the alien sorcerer left. Five hundred. That's pretty damn good. Oh my god. It's probably gonna do an all attack. Like all wind or something. It's gonna hurt. Oh. I'm gonna try to steal something. Ah, oh, oh. well, never mind. We finished it off, so it's not in my nature to no stealing. Okay, we learned spirit magic and black magic. Good, good. We have only three slots. What do we want to learn with Sarah? Absorb, transfer... I don't think so, she won't be on the first row anyway. Ab absorb, transfer sounds better for, for the characters that are in the front. Maybe we should put a slot on uh, Sarah, but I kind of want to save them so we have more. I feel like I want to prioritize having the most slots on both Kaim and Seth. I think we should bring Hook into this. Okay then, let's continue and see where we end up. Ah, uh, what? <gasps> We're on the other side? <laughs> Guys, we're at the swamp. Do you remember this? <sighs> okay. Then where are we going? Over here? Under this little bridge? All oh, right. Yeah, of course. This is where the save was, and our little fairy will go away now. Bye! <gasps> we'll have to do without. I wonder if we made it through. No! Still in the Black Cave. The Great Hall of Foul Creatures. Uh, that doesn't sound too good. What? Check out the map. There's a treasure here. Curse blocker. Okay. Uh, immunity to curse. Well, since I'm giving it Given it now, it probably means that there will probably be an enemy that could use it? <laughs> you never know. Wow. This is so freaking cool. Okay. Did we just do a blackout here? Uh oh. I hear something. I don't think There's they're. There. I don't think they're happy. Oh my god! What was that? Oh! They're coming, they're coming. 
Oh, no, it's the creatures we saw. <sighs> now this is more like it. There's only one way out. We have to go through them. Okay. Then we're fighting. Oh wow, I see their eyes all over the place. That's so chilling. Ah, oh my god. They're really hunting for me. Look at them. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's see what they can do. Thanks, say your prayers. These insect-like bugs. I don't know. Rough eater. Hmm. Well, we're soft, so you might not want to eat us. Hopefully. Hmm. Force. Since we don't have anyone that can see what kind of element they are, I'm just gonna have to guess. Or bring in uh, Jansen. <laughs> That's some pretty good damage, even to the back row. was definitely the correct one. What happened to Seth? What kind of... Is she asleep? Or what is it? Uh... Maybe she can still do something about it? I don't know what she is afflicted with. It looks like some kind of bird insect. Did Mac just get cursed? That's curse, right? I think I remember that icon. Well, these enemies have a healthy amount of HP. And we only have Winda with... Uh, Sarah. little bit like birds and insects put together oh is the gamble taking much longer because of that effect that is afflicting uh, Mac mm, we'll just use the regular one Well, on to the next one. Like taking candy from a baby. There seem to be quite many of them. Ooh, Spirit Magic 5. Both Kaim and Seth learned it. And just heal up. 
Oh my, that just took a bunch of mana. Anything else we can learn? No. Book. Oh, white magic five. Relax now. Anti petrify. Maybe change that one. Spirit magic. Mm, yeah. Maybe I should put a skill slot on her. How many did I have? Don't I have any? <gasps> did I use. All right, I used all of them. Did I? <gasps> Guys, I think I used all of them. Mm. <laughs> I could really need one for Sarah. Oh well. Do we have any more rings we can create? Spirit killer. We're just gonna create one of everyone. Just in case, then we can uh, do something at those uh, ring dudes. Oh my, why are they they're so fast? They're super freaky. I guess we're gonna go out here. Yeah. But we probably... Maybe we need to... Oh, we probably have to clear them all out. Oh, the red one? There's a red one? Where? Okay, maybe if we get the the red one. It's then maybe right we're done. Want, you got it. Or it's gonna be like this. We need to end all of these green ones. For the red one to appear. We will see, but it was available on the map, so I'm just gonna head over for it right away after this one. missing something that huge. I can't help but but think about a certain style when I see Sarah's dress. It looks so much like the style of Magna Carta. It's a really old game. I actually got it because I bought an art book even before I got the game and it's because I like the art style a lot. I think they did an MMO. Uh, the one who who did the character designs. Oh gosh, what was his name? Kim something. Uh, what was it? Ah, yeah, right. Oh, damn, I'm gonna probably butcher the name. Uh, I think it was Hyonte Kim. Maybe that's how you pronounce it. I really like the art style a lot. 
And that's what Sarah's um, outfit reminds me of. That kind of art style. He usually uses a lot of yellow, yellow colors. It's not in my nature to lose. Okay, let's go for this. I'm just gonna check the formation. Uh, are we gonna bring out Ming or Jansen? What am I doing? <laughs> Guys, you see, I can't. I am not. I am not someone who plays on a console. I'm a PC player. Come on here. Huh? Is it stuck? Don't tell me it just bugged out or something. Well, oh. Maybe I can just dribble them and get to this guy come on no don't you want to attack me okay we might have to fight every single one of them then it's most probably the way to go i'm always ready They did the wave with their mouths. <laughs> All right. It doesn't have Winda. It's only Sarah who has Winda. Yeah! Every time I say Winda, I'm thinking of Winda <laughs> that status effect oh my it seems like maybe I was afflicted with several several into one do we have poison on us too or something Oops. <laughs> oh my gosh You do wind, and you can do wind on this one. Yeah. It's really good to have counter on both Seth and. Uh, and Kaim. I would like to have counter on uh, on Mac as well, but I rather have the Platinum Gauntlet just so he uh, gets healed up when he does defend. Oh, we got no mana. Hmm, what we got? We had some bombs. Hmm. What do I want to do? I want to check what kind of spells we had. We don't seem to have anything to, to remove that status effect. If I only knew what it was, I'll check it out later. 
though. No, it's not. It's not paralysis either, and it's not seal. Some kind of a mixture that I haven't seen. Let's just go. No, you're strong enough, Sarah. You don't have to work on anything. Damn it! Where are these guys coming from? Does this mean They're we can't fight? Down, but this is just getting ridiculous. Or do we have to fight all of those green green ones? The leader has to be in there somewhere. That's the one we go for. Okay. I already found leader. So, we go for the leader. I just need to check the formation. Think maybe we should have him at the back. What? What? Why not? Okay, let's do that then. I removed Mac just because he doesn't have any MP left and I don't really want to give him any mana potions right now. We'll see if that was a good decision or not. Maybe MP Max up. Mental stability, magic casting speed, yes! Do not get interrupted! Um, did we remove it from Sarah? No, I don't think so. We don't have any slot seeds, so I want her to be able to use spirit magic. What do we get? Anti-terror? Might as well. Curse blocker. Okie dokie. Oh my gosh. Don't come after me. Oh, the boss is there. Oh, what? I dribbled him. Did you see how far off he triggered the fight? Gosh darn it. They do have some range. And now, since we have Jansen in our party, we can clearly see that they are of Earth Element. So Winda was definitely the correct choice. How far into this cave we are and where does that door lead to does it lead out of here or does it lead to an even bigger cave I don't like being in caves although this place where we're at now doesn't seem so scary because it's so open doesn't make me feel claustrophobic at all. Okay, when we're done with this guy, then we're gonna go straight to the boss. Gonna defend. 
want to maze waste much mana. There we go. What a waste of time. Okay, I hope I don't run into another one. <laughs> oh, I'm really trying here, you guys. Oh my gosh. Will I be able to? I don't know. What? Yes! We made it. Too fast to get us. <laughs> Just calm down, okay? I'm always calm. <laughs> Ming definitely knows my weakness. <laughs> he knows I'm not calm at all. Mm, do we want to do all shield? Or just do heal, just in case. We don't know how much damage these guys can do. Especially the red one. I'm scared of that one. Right, these are different. These are blue. Right. Okay, they go for one and the same. Baramon is jealous. What the They've got a bunch of HP. Okay. Now is not the time to die. Finish that one. What do we want to do? Do we want to do a gamble? Might as well. Winda. In case the gamble fails. Okay. We are shredding in this fight. Come on, be a high number. Yes. <laughs> so lucky. Mm, it has the same element. I almost anticipated the queen to have some kind of other element. Just to throw us off. Right. <gasps> what? Maybe we should just focus on the queen. So she doesn't call. Okay. Okay. She's done for. Whew, we made it. Okay. Now we definitely made it. We got a slot seed. Uh, Kaim learned anti cures too. I think I'm gonna give that slot seed to hey, Sarah. They're all running away. Finally, they know how hey, strong we are. The body, just cut off the head. You know, that's not a bad idea. And we're just at the entrance of something and also an exit. It's either an entrance or an exit. I just need to check this place out first. 
if we've missed something. <laughs> and I kinda, kinda wanna save, just in case, because we don't know what's gonna be on that... Behind that door. We have no clue. Well, maybe some of you who have played this know. But you can't be too careful. Not in this game, I mean... When we fought that uh, huge larva or worm-like creature, they just put us in another fight. Without saving, so that was pretty scary. Seems like this game likes to do those things. So I do feel pressured when we're in a boss battle to win. Just so I don't have to redo everything. Black magic for well factual analysis we should also learn from Jansen. It won't be at the front. Do we just pick one? We have linked one with Cook though. Uh, white magic, erase the spell Sephira, level 5. Oh, right. It's, it's only Cuckoo as level 5. Okie dokie. Let's check if we miss something. I just have a feeling that there's some kind of chest lurking about. But there might not be. Nope. We're ready. Huh? Oh! It's a way outside? Okay. I'm, I'm fine with that. So, where to now? Oh, they did talk about like some kind of... Oh, city of Saman. I was just about to say a village. So that's where we're going. I wonder what kind of city this is. Oh, looks a bit medieval or something. What is this? Sun? Oh, boo. this seems like a ghost town to me. What? Why? Are they not alive or something? Something's not right with this town. Yeah. It's strange. Come to think of it, Saman is a merchant town. It should be filled with people from Gotsa and all corners of the world. So, what happened? It seems so dark and eerie. Hey, what is with that house? It looks like a face. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Will you stop that? Now I can't not see as a face. Thanks a lot. <laughs> But same. <laughs> hey, are you folks travelers? Worried looking Thanero. I'm amazed you made it here. Didn't the monsters attack you? Well, we were attacked several times by several different monsters. Is there something going on? I'd say for a while now, starting about a year ago, we've, we've been having all sorts of weird things happen in, in this town. Furniture dancing around, children's toy causing havoc, and people are starting to wander around aimlessly like zombies. What? Yeah, this, this game just surprises me. We can't get any help from Gotza either. Whatever 
it is it that's causing all this also sealed off the ice canyon path that connects us to Gotza. Huh. You're kidding me. We're in a rush to get to Gotza. Well, don't look at me. That path is already dangerous. Winding its way through the cracks of the glaciers. Now the entrance is blocked by these huge ice columns. Hmm. Well, we need to take care of that then. The only way to Gotza now is by sea. But the only ship we have left that hasn't been sunk is just a tiny boat. It isn't sturdy enough to make it anywhere near Gotza. Okay, let me guess. We're gonna have to solve this issue. Whatever issue there is in this town. Well, this game really does keep on surprising me. And I thought we were just gonna have one, one creepy place. But we have another one. The last time the West Sea lit up, all these monster fish with legs came up out of the water. People think that something's causing all the abnormalities in the sea. Could it have to do something with the graphs, Grand Staff operation? Some of us volunteered to check out the West Sea. It looks like there's just one ship that's in good enough shape for us to use. Hmm? What? You expect me to say welcome or something? Look, just leave me alone and go die somewhere, okay? Whoa, kid. Where's your mom? Or dad? You shouldn't be speaking like that to people. <laughs> Welcome to the town of Saman. This place is a real blast, let me tell you. Enjoy your stay. Maybe this doesn't have to do anything with Grand Staff. Maybe it's something pollutioning? I don't know. There's something, I don't know. I can't even guess anymore. Erlio family house. What? What she's hiding from? Is she hiding from her husband or something? All he ever does is talk to that doll now. I'm afraid it might be cursed. Well, you got me scared too, ma'am. <laughs> That's so creepy. Can't you see I'm quite occupied right now? Stop bothering me. Devoted earlier. Uh, yeah, to the doll. Darling, I love you so much. You are the own that I love most in the world. What? That is so freaky. Abnormal, yes. Definitely. Wait, he was looking at me. So it's me that he loves. <laughs> Great. Kaim, let's just leave before that doll just... We're supposed to be newlywed. Something's got to be wrong with that doll. <gasps> what if it has something to do with the doll? Why everyone is weird. <sighs> I mean, anything could be possible. That's so strange. This ghost town, oh, might be more creepy than the mansion. But at least there's people here. So that makes it not as scary. Although, these people seem like zombies, just like we were told. What? How much do you want? Okay, a he healing herb. We haven't have had any reason to use one. Okay, I think we're done here. It was so eerie just to not even have any music there. Let's check all these places. Oh my gosh! 
It's just a gust of wind and everything rustling that is so... <laughs> How could this be happening? We can't sleep safely in our own city. Dejected Delno. Glad to see you made it to safety. You'll be all right inside here. Well, thank you. What is this? Ticket machine or something? Hello? You done yet? Oh, is this a, this a bathroom? I can understand if things are crowded right now with all the refugees, but do they really have to hog the bathrooms too? Why? They can't use the bathrooms? Why can't you just use this one? Oh, it's because it's not a bathroom. I was about to think that we entered the women's bathroom. And as kind, we would have been totally thrown out. But if we use the cat ears, maybe we could go inside. <laughs> Welcome to my inn. It's safe inside here, so please stay for as long as you'd like. Uh, we might as well stay. And see if we get a new dream. Well, it's good to rest up so we get our HP and MP back up. We have three here. One there. Uh, maybe I've missed those. Or maybe I just need to go back. Well, everything is quite closed off right now, so we can't really go back. And we didn't have a new dream. Persons in. I'm gonna have to check my room before we go. I wouldn't want to miss anything really good. Sticky tape. Hmm. Could be useful. He's so pretty. Look at him. And and this this armor is so freaking cool. I just like that feather on the side of his arm. And it's like a string attached to it. It's a very, very good detail. Now look. <laughs> oh, this is so cute. Did we make this the thumbnail? <laughs> well, if I don't find another thumbnail, then I'm definitely gonna use that one. <laughs> He looks so good with the mimin ears. Oh, I think Sarah would look really good with them. They would totally match her outfit. But the mimin ears look very, very good on Seth as well. Almost to the point where they just melt into her. Here you have a vase. And nothing else. Monsters appeared out of the ocean a little while ago, you know? Why did I ever decide to leave Numara? Oh, he's from Numara? Ah, you're new in town, aren't you? Something about this mist is turning someone upside down. Is it the mist that's doing it? Okay, it's not the doll then. It's the mist. Well, she's saying it's the mist. And the NPCs are usually right. There's usually one NPC that's right. It was... Okay. It's like when one of the NPCs at the Tosca village said that the sorceress... That she doesn't believe that the sorceress is evil. There's one. What is this? Is it a... Is it a car or something? Oh, that is so eerie. Yeah, I don't like that one bit. What if it just jumps, attacks us? <sighs> I just don't feel like doing anything. Okay. Well, I don't know if all of these guys stink or something because there's something purple going away. 
purple emitting from their bodies. Pixie flower. Hmm. I wonder if we can see it. <gasps> we can! Oh my gosh, look at this! How freaking fabulous is this? Yes, Kaim! So beautiful! I just wanted to check it out. What is that purple thing? Is it the merchant? Looking at something invisible. Meow. Something invisible, you say? Uh... Should we go to where it's looking? Over here? Here? Where the papers are floating around in a circle-like thing? Yeah! Oh, this is not weird at all. Whoa! <gasps> <gasps> what are you looking at? You got a problem with my headlights? Oh my god, that scared me so bad. <laughs> oh my gosh. Why was that so scary? Whew. Is it because I have the sound way too high? Emelo's Tavern. Oh sure I do, and as far as I'm concerned, that guy had it coming. He's so rude to everyone. Who is? Hey, did you hear about that thing? You know, that thing that's been spotted in that rich guy's house? Huh? Rich guy's house? What do you mean? I'm talking about the house by the docks. You'll see what I mean. The guy who mumbles to himself all the time. Okay, we're gonna go to that house. Are you from Tosca? I'm trying to get back there, but there's just no way through. How did you know? Is this the style in Tosca? <laughs> Monsters have breached the city limits. If it weren't for alcohol, I doubt it I'd be able to face such nonsense. Not much work to be done when the city is in this state. Oh well, have another drink. It's broken. I so wanted to hear some music though. Maybe I'll have another drink. I'm a little anxious to walk home by myself. Can we fix it? There's something I've been wondering. Aren't you cold wearing nothing but that? What? Girl, you're more underdressed than they are. Where, where are you asking? <laughs> We've never had fog like this before, miss. How about a drink to warm yourself up? There's something I've been wondering. What? What? Kind of chilly here, isn't it? It's starting to get foggy now too. I wish I was back in Numara. She's also from Numara? Well, I've seen that lady in the blue dress at Numara. Traveling? You've certainly come at a difficult time. Yes. I have. Well, we can't do nothing. Well, we can't fix that jukebox. I'm sorry, but... E Another monster! Oh wait, you're just a traveler. <laughs> How do I look like a monster? And he also thought I was a monster. What the hell? Is it because I look regular? Or... I need that water. I need it to become more and more beautiful. That's not really how it works. Although, water is very good for your skin. And overall health, so drink water. Don't pick a fight with me, just okay. What are you looking at? Just because I stopped you, those scratches on my bumper are there for a reason. Uh, is a car picking a fight with me? Really? Where's this rich guy's place? Wahahaha, <laughs> this money is all mine. Rich Rorden. Oh, okay. This golden sheen, the heavy feel in the hand, wahahaha, <laughs> no one else can have it. Well, you have it. 
Whoa, hold on. Who the heck is this guy? Don't think he's noticed us yet. He must be under a spell of some sort. That's strange. Is it also the mist? So what? Can we just rob him or something? A slot seed. 1000 gil? Okay, we definitely robbed this guy. <laughs> Whetstones. There seems to be something behind him that's glowing. I'm just gonna check every ounce of this place. In case we get thrown out, you know. Open. What's that? A ledger or something? That looks like bad news waiting to happen. Oh, what did he do? Shh! You want him to find us? Oh. Aha! What, what you got that thing out for? I don't care about it if it ain't money. It's a ledger. It could be anything. Hehe, <laughs> you see? He doesn't even want it. So, does that mean we take it? That's kind of beside the point. Well, whatever. We probably won't miss it anyway. He probably won't miss it. So, now we obtained it. <laughs> Wahaha, this money is all mine. Well, it's out in the open. So, can we have some? Would he notice if, if we just grab a bunch of it with a shovel and just ran out? <laughs> well, he seems out of it. And there's something purple coming from your stove or whatever that was. Do we have some kind of treasure now? Secret ledger looked for by the Saman Traders Guild contains evidence of smuggling? Is that why he has this kind of money? Uh, so where is this trader's guild? And what can I gain from it? Hmm? We're probably gonna get rich if we tell them. The captain is probably nervous about the trip or something. He said that his stomach was hurting. I wonder if he'll be alright. Busy Davy. Okay, Davy. Let's enter. What's in here? Is it a shop? <gasps> it is a shop. Auden's item shop. Oh. Travelers, how are your shoes treating you? Ah, pardon me if I surprised you. I'm a shoemaker, you see. So I always worry about people's feet. Town cobbler Zavio. There was once a legendary shoemaker, and the stories of his exploits uh, enthralled me so much that I figured I'd become one myself. Hmm. Are we gonna get a dream out of this? I hope so. <gasps> dream time! I need to seat myself. Better. Dream has been revealed. I am ready. Oh, darn it, I don't have any water. I hope my voice doesn't just crack up. The story of Old Man Grio. Old Man Grio was known as the best shoemaker in the country. His shoes were light as a feather and tough as steel. They were also expensive, three times higher than anything else on the market. People who did not know his reputation were so shocked to hear what he charged that they would say, the old man must be making shoes for his own amusement. Of course, this was not the case. He had become a craftsman apprentice at a tender age, and whenever he learned one master skill, he would mo move on to more talented shoemakers. Before he knew it, he found himself making shoes for the grandchildren of his earliest customers. What sweet! And he's so smart to go from one shoemaker to another to just master his skills. 
That's how you advance, people. Uh, I think this is gonna be an interesting story. I wonder how... Oh, he will probably make shoes for Kaim or something. Yeah. Grio was such a skilled craftsman. He could make any kind of shoe the customer ordered. But he was best at, and most enjoyed making, thick-soled traveling shoes. All his customers agreed. Once you've traveled in old man Grio's shoes, you can't wear anybody else's. Some would say, you know what it's, it's like to wear his shoes? You don't get tired the same way. You just want to keep walking, as long and as far as you can. You almost hate to get where you're going. That kind of shoes! I would really need these when I'm on my trip to Japan. I've been to Japan once, and let me just tell you, I had like 30,000 steps. At least two of the days I had like 30,000 steps. That's insane. And I was walking in heels. Well, that's my own fault. True craftsman, ah, true craftsman that he was, though, old man Grio rarely talked to his customers. And he could be downright unfriendly. Complimented on, on his work, he wouldn't so much as smile. Instead, he would put another piece of tanned leather on his wooden shoe last and start hammering away. The only time the old fellow would crack even the slightest smile was when a customer visited his workshop to place an order. Hmm. He's a real salesman. <laughs> I'm thinking that he probably made traveling shoes for Kaim. Wouldn't he think it's weird if Kaim comes back several times? Or maybe he just went once. Not that he was ever thrilled to get an order. What he most enjoyed was when a customer brought him a pair of shoes that had outlived its usefulness. He would stare loving, lovingly at the worn down soles and the disintegrated uppers and he would actually talk to them. You've done some good traveling, I see. His regular customers would never dispose of their old shoes themselves because they knew how much he enjoyed this. Neither would they do anything so foolish as, uh, foolish as to clean the shoes before handing them over to the old man. He wanted them straight from the road, covered with dirt, oil stained, stained and stinking of sweat. <laughs> I think they just want to be like nice and not rude. I would never turn in my shoes dirty. But maybe... It's like he's feeling the usefulness of the shoes and he's like proud to be working on them. These fellows are my stand-ins, he would say, choosing an honored pl place for them in his storehouse. They take my place on the road, you know. They've done their job. I hate to throw them away just because they're no good anymore. Ugh, I feel like I'm not reading so good right now. It's because I've only talked Swedish, like, almost all day. Proud craftsman, though, he was. Old man Grio never wore his own shoes. He couldn't have worn them even if he had wanted to. His legs were gone from the knees down. Oh. A terrible illness had, has attacked his bones when he was very young. And the legs had been amputated to save his life. The old man had lived his long life in a wheelchair. He had never once left his native village. This was what he meant when he said that his shoes did his traveling for him. Oh, I get it now. That's kind of beautiful. It is. But this is why he likes shoes that much. Haven't seen you for a while, old man Grio says without looking up, looking up for, from his work as Kaim steps across the threshold. His back is toward the door, but he can tell from the sound of the footsteps when a regular customer has entered his shop. 
If you cross the desert, the sound tells him how worn down the shoes are and where they have been. Old man Grio is a craftsman of the first order. That is so cool that he can even hear that. Like, you've been to the desert, I can hear the sand. <laughs> it was a terrible trip, Kaim says with a grim smile. Settling on a chair in the corner of the shop, when old Gryu is in the final stages of shoemaking, almost nothing can make him stop work, as all his regular customers know. Were my shoes any good on this one? They were great. I couldn't have done it with anyone else's. That's good. The old man doesn't sound the least bit pleased, which is to be expected. <laughs> Gryo is especially curt when he's working. If Kaim wants to see the old man smile, he will have to wait a little until he hands Grio his old shoes during a work break. <laughs> and I made him sound so happy when I read that. Oh. Well, just get a pair of really worn out shoes that you've traveled with. Not just ones that have been in the wardrobe or in the cellar. Where you, or where you keep your shoes. I love that you can hear the hammering. It almost feels like I'm in a shoe shop myself. You can kind of hear the leather too. Here to order new ones. Uh huh. Where to this time? Up north, most likely. Ocean? Mountains? Probably walking along the shore. To fight? Probably. I like that sketch. Old man Grio signals his understanding with a quick nod. He says nothing for a while. The only sound in the workshop comes from Grio's wooden mallet. Kaim is moved to hear it. Like old times. He has ordered any number of shoes here. Even before the old man took over the shop. Oh, okay. So Kaim was a regular. It wasn't just because of Greo. Kaim is one of old man Greo's oldest customers. In other words, he's one of the few who have survived repeated journeys. Swinging his mallet and speaking in short snatches, the old man tells Kaim about the death deaths of some of his regular customers. Some fell ill and died on the road, others lost their lives in accidents, and not a few were killed in battle. Hmm. I wonder if we, he has like some kind of treasure stand for shoes. It's hard when only the shoes come back. Oh, the shoes come back to him? Time nods in silence. One young fellow died a few weeks ago. He was wearing the first pair of shoes I ever made for him. The soles were hardly worn at all. Tell me about him. You know, you hear it all the time. Leaves his hometown, wants to live someplace exciting. Parents try to stop him, but he goes anyway. Oh must have like died on his journey because they weren't worn i'm surprised he could afford shoes from you the parents bought them that isn't it they give their boy all this love and care and he's barely out of childhood when he says he's going to leave home they finally give up and decide to let him go they figure they can at least give him a pair of my shoes as a going away present Less than a month later, he comes back as a corpse. I don't know parents nowadays. They spoil their kids rotten. It's so damn stupid, Rio snarls. Kai knows that the old man's feelings go deeper than that. Old man Rio is the kind of craftsman who would rush to make a new shoes, make new shoes for the funeral of a sad young man who had breathed his last while his dream was only half finished. 
he would put them on the young man's feet in the coffin and pray that he would be able to go all the way on this final journey. Starting out pretty sad. But I wonder... Oh, it's... Of course... Grio is an old man, so it probably will, will end with him not being alive. Grio falls silent again and wields his mallet. Time notices how bent and shriveled the old man has become. He has known him a long, long time. Those days will be ending soon enough. Time thinks with an ache in his chest. Doesn't he wonder why Kaim looks so young? Or does he already know he's an immortal? Old Griot finally reaches a point in his work where he can turn and face his customer. It's good to have you back, Kaim. His face is covered with wrinkles. Kaim realizes anew how old he has become. I wonder for how many years Kaim has been a returning customer. Has it been like... 500 years? Where did you say you were traveling? The desert. Right. I think you told me that before. Kaim shakes his head. The old man seems to lose his powers of concentration when he isn't working. And his memory is shaky sometimes. Little by little, but unmistakably, old Grio is spending more and more time drifting in the space between dream and reality. People grow old and die. The truth of this all too obvious destiny strikes Kaim with special force whenever he completes a long journey. Aww, it's so sad just to know how, how many people Kaim have, has really loved in his life and for them to just all of them pass away. He has so many stories to tell. So you survived this one too, I see. Kaim looks at him with a strained smile. Have you forgotten? I can't die. Oh, he has told him. Oh, I guess I knew that. And I never get old. I look just like I did the first time you met me, don't I? The old man looks momentarily stunned. Oh, I guess I knew that too. He says, nodding uncertainly. He probably doesn't remember. But Kaim has already told him this. Sure, you were a kid then. You had just had that sickness and lost your legs and were crying all day long. That's right. I remember. You used to call me Big Brother Kaim and play with my old shoes. Do you remember? Yes, of course. Rio speaks with certainty now. Either the fog has cleared or the distant memory has come back with special clarity because it comes from so long ago we've had so many stories where these people are referring to Kaim as a big brother that is so sweet what a freaking lovely person Kaim is the souls were worn down there were holes here and there and they had a sour stink of mud and sweat to other people, they must have looked like plain old shoes ready for the garbage. But to me, they were a treasure. I remember running my finger through the coat of road dust that covered them and trying to imagine where they had been. I enjoyed them so much. I really enjoyed them. Time shoes were what got old Griots started as a shoemaker. It was all thanks to you, Kaim. If I hadn't met you, I would have spent my life cursing my fate. Instead, I've been happy. I'm happy now. Even if I can't leave this workshop, my sons can travel for me. I've had a happy life. He pauses. Well, now will you listen to me talking up, hey, talking up a storm? Rio says with an embarrassed smile. He extends a thick hand to Kaim. Well, Kaim certainly makes him very social, this old man Grio. And you can just see how much he likes him from the text. Alright now, 
Give me my sons, he says, and Kaim hands him the worn out old shoes he has brought him with him. The old man strokes them fondly and says with a sigh, You've been through many battle. I was a mercenary too for a time. I know that, says Grio. I can smell the blood. All the shoes that travel with you are like this. <laughs> are you angry? Not at all. I'm just glad you come back from this latest trip in one piece. I was like, oh, you're gonna know that we people. But only bad people. I'll be leaving again as soon as you make me new ones. Another one of those trips? To war? Uh-huh. And when, did you, when, when that journey ends, you leave on another one? Probably. How long can you keep it up? Kaim's only answer is a grim smile. Forever. This is not a word to speak lightly in the presence of someone who has lived what little time he has to the fullest. Oh well. Never mind, the old man says, turning his back on Kaim to continue his work. It's a sad life though to just go into war every single time. Well, the life of a mercenary. Wait three days. You can leave the morning of the fourth day. That will be fine. When will we meet next after that? Two years, maybe? Three? It could be a little longer. Really? Well then. This could be the last pair of shoes I ever make for you. <gasps> I believe it will be. The old man is not likely to last three more years. I'm frequently wishes it weren't not so. But wishing by itself can do nothing. Only those who possess eternal life know that this is precisely why the time a person lives is so irreplaceably precious. That's so sad. So we're not gonna be able to visit Greyo when we come back. It's gonna be a grave. Say, Kaim. What's that? Mind if I make a second pair of shoes out of the same piece of leather to match your new ones? They will be for himself, he explains. To be placed in his coffin for his life's final journey. I'd like that, answers Kaim. The man swings his mallet instead of thanking him. The sound is far sadder and lonelier than usual. It's so sad to think about, but it will be a beautiful memory. Come to think of it, though. Kaim, be sure to come back to this town even after I'm dead. Offer up your old shoes at my grave. I will. I'd like to say I'll be going to heaven a step ahead of you and waiting for you there, but in your case, it doesn't work. No, unfortunately. What's it like? An endless journey. Happy? Unhappy? Probably unhappy, Kaim replies. But his voice is drowned out in the rising sound of Grio's mallet until it's lost even to his own ears. Yeah, I'd probably be kind of unhappy too. Living for that long and seeing so many deaths and whatnot. He's been through a lot, Kaim. He's seen a lot. Old man Grio reached the end of his full, his full span of years soon after Kaim's visit to his shop. Because Grio had no family, his grave in the cemetery at the edge of the town was cared for by his many sons. In accordance with his wishes, his regular customers offered up their old shoes at his grave. Kaim's shoes were among them. Look at the shoes. And also, he called the shoes sons. That is so sad. Ah, oh, no! Do not cry! Do not cry! 
The words inscribed on, this, on his gravestone were chosen by Grio himself. He explained his choice to Kaim this way. I would say the words to each new pair of shoes before I handed them to the customer. I always said them to the customers to customer too. I never once had the experience though of hearing someone say the words to me. That's why I want them on my gravestone. These are the words I want to be seen off with on my journey to heaven. This is sad. Several decades flow by. Not only old man Grio, but all the customers who knew him have long since departed the world. The only one who still comes to pay his respects is Kaim. He no longer wears shoes that were crafted by the old man. Like the life of man, the life of a pair of shoes cannot be eternal. This was actually also a very beautiful story. But sad like many of them. Still. Time comes to the town at the beginning of every journey, touching his forehead to the ground at the old man's grave. The gravestone is covered with moss, but the words engraved on it, strangely enough, are still clearly legible. May your journey be a good one. These were the words the old man always spoke. Coming from his mouth, they could be br brusque, 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 but they were always charged with feeling. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nope. Nope. Stop it. Don't cry. Why do you make these sad stories? Oh my gosh. That was a very beautiful story. His shoes were so famous that everyone in the region wanted a pair of their own. I hope I can be even half as successful. Bah! How do I get copped up in this place? Okay. Oh, the ringmaster! Oh no, it's not the ringmaster. Uh, but we have new weapons that we could buy. Iron Heart. <gasps> Is it squalls? Maybe we should just get every single one of them. Sorcerer's Earring, I think we maybe should get two. Mm, Spirit Magic 4. Uh, didn't we already have something for Terror? Maybe I should just buy it too. Well, guys. Oh, we do have quite a lot of money. So maybe we'll just... Let me just see if, if I can afford everything. This one is only for cook. Or... Okay, let's pick three of them. Oh my gosh. Ooh, a lot of money went out there. Well, I think the shop owner is very happy about that, though. Hard Spata. And you're also gonna get one. Oh, what? Is it the same? No, it was just better. Than the one she already had. Bright Ankh. Oh. Is it gonna look like an ank? Uh, um, oh, you too. And 
What? They're both the same? Maybe we should pick this elder baton. Right ank. Oh, right. That's what why I bought three of them. I wasn't going to give one to the cook. Now, uh, what you got, shopkeeper? Hmm. Hmm. Recovers one party member from freeze. Lair. Uh, formation paralysis. What? What even? I'm just gonna buy some random stuff. Why did it look like there was a door here that could be entered? But no. There is nothing. Wait, I just need to check something first. <laughs> you see? I knew I missed something. I was like... Just when I was about to exit, I saw it. Well, time to save. Because I need to go get some sun. Thank you for watching and bye bye.